50 XP. It's nine years old. Seven years ago, the uh, one of the bolts in the muffler came loose. This vibrated. One of the small baffles come unwelded, unloose, went in through the uh, exhaust poop port, bounced around inside the piston cylinder, and uh, damaged the piston. And I had to replace the piston. And that's pretty much all I've done to it in the last seven years. Uh, it's done a lot of hours. It's my go-to saw for just about everything, every season, mid-season. It's done a lot of hours. I was cutting down a tree uh, a few days ago and um, I noticed the sound changed and it was struggling to cut down the tree. When the tree fell, the saw switched itself off. Uh, when um, I tried to pull it again, it feels like it's really stiff and almost inconsistent. Anyway, it's not right and it don't sound right. So we're going to break it down and find out what the problem is. I suspect the problem is with the cylinder head or the piston. And um, see what 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 is the matter with it? Okay, that's cleaned that up and cleaned the desk up at the same time. Well, that's set it up bad. No, that's not. <sighs> okay, something's definitely, definitely wrong there. Time to take it apart and discover what. I've just taken this part. Right, this is a replacement. This is a replacement. And these were only replaced, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago. This one's missing. So it's a constant battle with these 550s, with these, with these exhausts. And I don't understand why. So I've read several times that there is an underlying issue with the stresses on the cylinder head and this exhaust that Husqvarna were aware of. But um, see, that is a long... It is missing out of there, isn't it? Yep. Uh, 
and this doesn't feel very tight either and these were now locked in so the problem I had last time was this exhaust was vibrating so much that a small piece of internal baffle broke off went in the exhaust port bounced up and down on the piston Okay. Can't say as I know where that goes. In there. Right. Well, that's all quite a mess and fiddly. Okay, so that's the cylinder head. I'm, I'm currently missing the spacer there. Cylinder head, uh, air filter housing, carburetor, carburetor strap. And now we're left with this. Okay, that's quite a complicated thing to remember. That is quite a complicated thing to remember. Lay that out like that. Okay, that's that. That's that. Bit of blood. There's another bear in housing. Party comes. There. All right, well, that's quite burnt up in there. All right. All right, so this bear in here this is quite clearly not supposed to do that but it's that bearing in there that's wrecked so I'm assuming we've got to knock this out now to get the rod and the bearing out I've got updates. So 
So I've broken the crank down, taken the piston off, taken out the needle bearing, taken out the needle bearing from the piston, and uh, it's definitely a metal needle bearing. Um, it's got some wear to it. The pin through the piston's definitely got wear to it. So that was quite wobbly on the top there. And then looking at this, this is quite, yeah, this has got wear to it. Also, this is completely no use whatsoever. So the needle bearing in here has failed completely. There are a number of forums. I'm not big on forums. I'm not big on shared information unless it's really useful, to be honest. Anyway, there's an awful lot of information available on the forest forums, on the Husqvarna forums, that this needle bearing in here is nylon. Well, I can't speak for every single needle bearing that's gone into a bearing, and I can't speak for all of those that go on about how bad it must be to put a nylon needle bearing in the bottom of an engine. It's especially a two-stroke, specifically a two-stroke. Could you get away with it in a four-stroke? Hmm. I wouldn't want to see nylon in any engine. Anyway, so I've broken this down in its entirety now, with the exception of removing the pin. Well, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do this. Now you can see that bearing in there, right? And it's definitely not nylon. It's definitely metallic, right? There is no question at all whatsoever that that needle bearing inside there is not nylon. It's definitely not nylon. So that's quite a major update. So it's been sat here like this in pieces for 48 hours because the first thing I did was make sure I could get a replacement cylinder head. This is burnt out and not good. So I need a new cylinder head and I need a new piston. <laughs> These are a lot of money. Unless you buy a cheaper knockoff, then they're really cheap. Okay. Now I need both side bearings and the uh, crank, both both con rod, basically, connecting rod needle bearings. This one and this one. This one I can get. That's, that's no problem. This one I can't get. I can't get this. Don't seem to be able to buy this. Unless you buy the whole thing. So it seems... For whatever reason, a lot of chainsaw manufacturers, not just Husqvarna, right, still are responsible for this at all. They don't sell the needle bearing or you have to buy the complete unit. The complete unit comes complete, right? And then you just pop it in. Now, I don't know why that is. I haven't tried to knock this shaft out yet through here. So I, I honestly don't know how that's put in there, but I should imagine it's just pressed in there and it will just press right out and you can and then extract this needle bearing that the, is the rod bent, uh, is the rod worn? Well, it's hard to say whether the rod's worn and it largely depends on what's happened in there. Um, so I don't know why, oh, that's freed up a bit. Oh no, it hasn't. Um, so, Anyway, I'm wittering because here's the point. I've got this broken down. It's nine years old. It's done... Oh, where, where do I even start with how many thousands of hours are on this? Where have I got where? I've got where in all the bearings. Okay, I can buy all the bearings and all the gaskets. This is worn, right, and the piston. Right, that, that's, that's, that's an easy fix. Right, the replacement cylinder head and the replacement piston and the replacement crank from Husqvarna.
these two components, this doesn't include all the other things you might want to replace while you're at it, or the labour, but these two components are equal to the cost of a new saw. Almost. If I buy a cheap knockoff of that and a cheap knockoff of that, I'm half the price of a new saw. Almost. And I say almost. I went to town to the Husqvarna dealer. Right, and, and I know the mechanic there, and I, I spoke to him, and I showed him this, and he's like, hmm, this is not the first one I've had of this. He said it's fuel. Fuel. Yeah, he said, have you been putting 93 in it? I said, well, no. Now, here's the thing. My highest octane fuel you can get here is 95. I like 98 and 99, personally, in all engines. And definitely nothing with any ethanol in it. We're not even going to go down that route. Because anybody that's watching this that knows about small engines knows that it's completely wrecking everything. So I run everything on 95, period. That's that's the highest octane fuel I can get. Yeah, it's it's fuel. So does this mean that 95 is no longer 95? Because right? he would know. Because there are 550s everywhere in his shop. Right Now we are in Sweden. Right, so the shop is an array of Husqvarna, and he is a Husqvarna dealer. But there was a lot of 550s on the floor. Too many. Anyway, he's saying this is down a fuel. Do I need to explain two strokes? Yeah. A four-stroke, in a four-stroke engine, this would be an oil. Whether it be a wet sump or a dry sump, it would be an oil. In two-stroke engines, it's not an oil. It relies the oil in the petrol to lubricate this. Right, does that mean that there is petrol and oil in here? Yeah. That's how two-stroke works. Right, two-stroke doesn't have any oil in it other than what's in the fuel, which means all working parts. So then you're into <coughs> oil-fuel ratio, Simon. No, it's, it's such a subjective subject, this. Right. Some Husqvarna's and some stills recommend right, 100 to 1, others 75 to 1, some 50 to 1, some 25 to 1. And I always heavy on the oil. Always, always heavy on the oil. Am I exactly on recommended manufacturer set? No, I'm not. I'm more oil. So it's not oil. Is it the type of oil? No, don't think so. Two-stroke oil, Husqvarna two-stroke oil, it's the same. Do I buy the premix? No, I don't. <laughs> so, at the end of the day, with thousands of hours on the chainsaw and this like this, which is not nylon, right? It's a metallic needle bearing in there. How upset am I? Well, quite upset because it's a really good saw and I like it and it's the right weight. And you don't want to keep throwing your money would I like to fix this? Yeah, if I could get that out, put a new needle bearing in it, can I repair this? Yes. If I find, right, a non-Husqvarna bottom crank Conrod assembly, would I reassemble the saw with also a not genuine? Yes, I would. Absolutely, I would. And there's a reason for that. It would never, ever be my main saw again. Because... Um, it's too worn. It's too worn. The engine mounts are worn. The oil pump housing is worn. There's so many things that are worn on this. Am I expecting the muffler to disintegrate again before I'm fit? Yeah. So there's so many things that are worn on this because it's a professional saw. It's not a. If you were a home user, would I expect this saw to last you? Well, in some cases, if you just started it up a few hours each season of lifetime, yeah, I would. I would. However, these two-stroke engines are designed to run on tickover and flat out. So it's either on tickover or it's running flat out. And um, that's the bottom crank bearing gone. And the other bearings that I've taken out are quite loose and quite worn. So the whole bottom end is worn. So what's the alternative? Because I talk to you lot, I've done a bit of research on the internet and found out what a new 550 
Mark II, XP Mark II, costs in the UK, mainland Europe, in Russia, in the United States, in Australia. Can you buy a Husqvarna 550 XP Mark II in all of that? Yeah, you can. Right, and the prices are varied. Why is it more expensive here? Everything's more expensive here. Do the prices I found online reflect what I've seen in the store? No. Are the prices more in the store than they are online? Yeah, obviously. And I can say obviously because I understand retail, I understand manufacturing, I understand economics. So you have bigger overheads with a small store or a dealership than you do with an online retailer. And therefore, an online retailer will buy said item from the manufacturer. They'll put a very small margin on it. They'll put it on the internet far cheaper than anybody else. They'll offer free postage and away it goes. So based on an internet price, the best internet price I can find in Sweden, I can hazard a guess at what they buy it from the manufacturer. Now I don't need the bars or the chains or all the other fluffy stuff that comes with it. All I need is a new motor, a new head unit. That's what I need. So whilst I'm at our local Husqvarna dealer, he's got a 550 XP Mark II, right, which is the version of this, but without decompression and Husqvarna have uprated the little things that they found wrong with it. I do hope there's a different kind of muffler on it. And it's it's sat there on a you know on a, a shelf with a price on it, <coughs> just which is a lot. With the bar and the chain and all the fluffy stuff. And uh, he's got to make his profit on top because he's got a small store, right? And they have to make their margin. I don't want to pay that margin. I don't want to pay that margin. So now I've got a choice. I can give my money to an anonymous online retailer, or I can give the store, the dealer owner, an opportunity to make a little bit of money. And it is only going to be a little bit of money. So I says to him, I need a new head unit then. He did recommend not getting another one of these. Right, he did recommend, based on the age and the hours of the saw, to replace the saw. Okay. So, I told him that I didn't need all the fluffy stuff, all the bar, all the chain. And I know how much the bar and the chain costs. And then I told him how much I was prepared to pay for just the head, for the motor itself. Just the little orange with the engine in it. To include taxes. Moms, VAT, value added tax, government tax, whatever you want to call it, there's a price and then there's more tax. Even though there's tax already, let's not discuss tax. So I told him the price. And he quickly worked through in his head, right, if I don't want the fluffy stuff, how much is that's worth? How much he has to pay for it? What it costs him to sit there on the shelf and he agreed. Three to four seconds it took him to work all that through his head and he agreed. I don't like that doing that to anybody because, you know, I said, you make a little bit of money and I get the best deal. And he said, well, just a little bit. And, and he does. He will only make a small amount of money. But that is money that he wouldn't have made if I had just gone to the online retailer. And I had to go back because his partner who runs the tyres in the other side of the shop is changing tyres for the vans. Just So... <sighs> All being well, I'm going back on Friday and I will get my changed over tyres onto the right wheels for the right vehicle and pick up a new 550 head saw. And then all I have to do is put this together in a way that I remember how I took it apart and find another one of those for a price that I'm prepared to pay so I can put this saw back together so I've got a backup saw. It's not going to be a genuine Husqvarna. It's going to be a 550 XP. It's going to work in exactly the same way. Nobody but me is going to know. However, we are going to put it back together with some non-genuine parts. It's really disappointing when I, when I fail, when I can't fix something with... It's disappointing. 
It's disappointing I couldn't get a, a needle bearing, or not yet. It's disappointing I just couldn't do something with that bottom crank. So, like I've said, I have partially reassembled it in a way that I know where it all goes, put all the different bolts in the bags, marked up on the bags, put it in a box, marked up what it is, right? And as soon as I can get my hands on the said crank assembly, I'll reassemble it and we'll have a spare. In the meantime, Husqvarna 550 XP Mark II. So, this is my old Oregon saw with my speed cut chain, and this is the replacement. Not something I want to do. How was I able to do this? You. So this is my buy me a coffee money. Every cent of my buy me a coffee money has gone towards this. Was actually quite a major part of buying this. So for all of those that have bought me a coffee over the years, and it's been a couple of years, uh, I've not spent a dime of that money, not, not at all. It's just sat there until I needed it. I needed it. So, has my new computer that my YouTube money was supposed to go to got out the window? Yes, it has. has uh, have I spent all my buy me a coffee money on a new chainsaw? Yes, and I'm really grateful and thank you all very much for doing so. I need this, obviously. Can't operate at all in any way without my 550. So let's, let's talk about the 550. The first thing I notice is heavier. So it's only been, what, a week since I've the, the old saw seized up and, and I've been using it for years. So I can tell you it's heavier. How much heavier? Hard to say. It is heavier, which is a bit disappointing, I have to say. <coughs> yeah, it's a bit disappointing. It's noticeably heavier. I'm sure uh, some of you already know exactly how much heavier the Mark II is over the Mark I. Uh, visually it's similar, this is different. The biggest difference I noticed straight away was the exhaust, the muffler is a completely different design and the front end here is a different design too. The oil tank appears to be bigger and a different shape and so the muffler is, is on top as opposed to leaning forwards. I'm hoping this solved the problem with the Mark One. I haven't opened it up. I literally just put my chain and my bar on. Now this is a lot different. So the first thing you'll notice on the Mark Two from the Mark One is a mass flow air filter. I was always disappointed with the first air filter compared to what still give you. I didn't think it worked so well anyway. And the, the second thing I noticed straight away is the top of the spark plug is exposed. It's quite fiddly with the spanner before, so I kind of I kind of liked that. And then again, the whole muffler assembly design is different. I can't tell you that The cylinder head, it looks very similar, if I'm honest. And the carburetor setup looks very similar. And they, some, it's, it's a little different. It's a little different. Let's bring you in here for a, a better look if you haven't seen. The Mark II's been out for years. But if you haven't seen the differences and you're still a, you know, a 550 Mark I... The original user, you can see the the difference there in the whole setup of the muffler and the way that it works. The more exposed head, the air filter is different, the carburetor is different, or the wiring at least is different. The controls are the same. You know, first thing you'll notice is there's no decompression button on the Mark II. They say it's not needed, so otherwise everything else is certainly the gearing is, is the same. Yeah, 
Okay. Well, I don't suppose uh, whatever they've done inside will make much difference. I've read about the nylon bushing on the crank in the Mark II. Can't confirm that. So that should mean as soon as the weather sorted itself out, I can get straight back to it. Pull back to reset, obviously. You know, that's the most important thing for me. Yeah. I should be able to remove that. And as it goes to idle, flick it and um, it applies the brake for me while I'm doing what I'm doing. All right, well, that's it. Made possible by some of you. If you want to help out the channel, if you want to help me out at any point, then buy me a coffee. That's the way to go. Um, Super Thanks is available on uh, my YouTube channel. All I will say about that is YouTube take a much higher proportion of my Super Thanks money than buy me a coffee does. So I get more of your money. Does that sound bad? I don't like that. Anyway, that is factual. I get more of your money if you buy me a coffee than you do if you give me a super thanks. And that's how, of course, uh, most of the YouTube channels are funded, is by you, the viewer. So for that, I'm very grateful. Thank you all very much. Have a great day. I look forward to getting this outside. What's the weather like at the moment? <sighs> it's snowing. That is what the weather is like at the moment. It's snowing. Really appreciate you all. Have a good day. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.